Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our presentation. We are pleased to be with you today. Since this current situation has dramatically changed our educational strategies, we faced the necessity to find new ways to teach in the online environment, keeping in mind that we must leave some time for collaboration, creativity, and interaction. So what can we do to make learning better and to help our students succeed? First of all, there has to be a good planning. We have to make sure that we have our syllabus and requirements formulated clearly before classes start. This will give students an opportunity to see if the deadlines, materials, and other requirements can fit into their lives. Teaching online requires certain technical skills, so we have to master technology. It will help us to find appropriate tools we uh, can use for creating engaging activities for students. Since communication is essential in the online classroom environment, it is very important to maintain a consistent online presence, providing plenty of instruction and feedback. We should provide some flexibility for students. It will help them feel safe and more comfortable in a new learning environment. Lead with empathy and, and avoid making assumptions. Different students have different comfort levels and certain circumstances. So what technology should we use in our classroom? It all depends on your choice. There is a great variety of tools that could help you in the teaching and learning process. We just need to consider many factors, such as student achievement goals, our technology skills. We have to embrace technology, which is easy to use and in integrate. Then technology skills that our students must learn. Students may have to get training and support before you start using these technologies. And of course, accessibility, both in terms of internet bandwidth and speed requirement and student disabilities. Today, I would like to review the platform for designing video-based lessons, which is called Edpuzzle. It's a great tool to use for incorporating video into instruction and an essential tool for using video in the flipped classroom setting. So what is Edpuzzle? With it, you can embed questions into video content and track students' understanding, progress or engagement. You can build activities from scratch with a YouTube video or use existing lessons available in the Edpuzzle library. It's a web-based interactive video and formative assessment tool that allows users to crop videos. It can be existing online video or you can upload your own recording, add content, customize videos with voiceovers or audio comments, embed assessment questions or additional resources, export data from the embedded quizzes and incorporate that data into Canvas. View students' scores and their progress over time, and that allows instructors to assign due dates and prohibit students from fast-forwarding. How can we use Edpuzzle? There are three ways you can use Edpuzzle in your classroom. The first one is classic, when students can work in class or at home individually. This will give them an opportunity to work at their own pace. The second one is live mode, when students can watch videos in live mode and answer the questions using their own devices. And the last one is open class, when students watch a video as a group and participate in discussion without using devices. How does it work? The steps are simple. Create an account. Choose existing video or upload your own, add content, questions, additional resources, audio notes, etc. Share with students, 
and provide a feedback. Edpuzzle is a free tool, but there is also an opportunity for upgrading. But the free basic plan allows uh, teachers to edit, assign, and store up to 20 videos. I am currently creating videos for my full class, and it is easy to use and powerful enough for my Russian classes. There are a lot of tutorials on how to use that puzzle, and I would like to share some of them, the latest ones which were recorded this year. You also might find answers to your questions from a puzzle help center. And you will find uh, all these links in multimedia PDF I created for you. Everyone, and welcome to the second part of our presentation, Interactive Tools for Online Teaching. My name is Ekaterina, and I work in the uh, Languages, Philosophy and Communication Studies Department. So today I will talk about Flipgrid. It's a tool that is accessible through Canvas and also separately and how you can use it in your online course. So I work in the languages department, as I said before, but I believe this tool, which is basically, which basically allows you for video discussions with your students, can be applicable and used in any course where you have some discussions with your students. So again, uh, Flipgrid, a quick overview, um, is a tool that allows you to create free video-based discussions. So a video, like you can see here, a sample uh, from the internet, um, it will allow you to record up to 10 minutes. Uh, a single video it can be less right um, it is integrated into canvas which is really convenient for you and for the students to have everything in the same place um, it also works as a mobile app and it's used through uh, from k-12 to graduate uh, courses and another uh, good function there that it allows for uh, peer to peer uh, feedback and of course feedback from you and as you see in the sample here uh, you can see the rubric performance creativity ideas how it's organized so it can be a more structured uh, rubric that you can create or also it can be more open-ended so there are different ways you can use flipgrid right uh, so, for example, students can make self-introductions the first day of class. You can also post for them a question of the day. So you see here the future of ocean power, right, as an example, and each uh, has to provide a response. You can also share a link uh, with uh, like a guest presenter. It can be maybe an expert on the topic that you discuss, and they can join with a pre-recorded uh, video. Uh, you can also uh, uh, ask your students to give book, book talks, right? Like a short video about their favorite book or a book they recently read. And again, peer-to-peer uh, -peer, peer feedback um, can also be in, in the format of a video, right? So when they respond to each other, uh, they can create a video response, which is really, I think, very convenient for the students. So um, here are a few screenshots uh, from my classes, and I uh, try to hide the identities of the students uh, with the butterflies, as you see here. And um, so again, uh, some features is that students video record their responses, as you see here on the left. Again, there is a grading uh, rubric. I used um, just um, ideas and performance for my class, but you can add more features and also some open-ended comments. And um, you can also see um, how many 
hours they engaged right like you can see here on the third screenshot how many hours they engaged with this assignment or with these videos and how many views each video got so there are also a few options to flip grid uh, so there is go react which is also a canvas app and the difference is that it allows for uh, time stamped uh, feedback to your students as you see here um, on the sample on the right there is also uh, marco polo which is a popular uh, mobile app and it's similar to flipgrid uh, video um, discussions and you can also create groups and i think it works really well on the um, phone so it may be really convenient uh, for students and of course there is add puzzle and um, my colleague Irina already explained how to use add puzzle uh, to create video based lessons i know other instructors also use it um, as a way to give feedback so students would upload their video or the video presentation uh, via youtube and then she'll give feedback uh, using these features or maybe even ask questions to the students about their presentation and of course there are many resources available online if you're interested in this tool so there are many tutorials here is one of them and also there are a lot of uh, pedagogical kinds of articles where you can get more ideas about how to use this tool in your classroom and again it doesn't have to be a language classroom so we hope this session was useful and um, maybe as a follow-up we have these questions for you um, if you have any questions or concerns maybe you used these tools in the past and if we can help you or collaborate um, with you on how you can integrate these tools in your course, we will be happy uh, to do that. And here is our information. You can see the two emails. So we hope we can uh, stay in touch and we hope this was something useful and insightful for you.